Hey everybody, welcome back. Welcome to the... Still rolling. Still rolling. And we're back. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the fifth lesson in the Firebase database for SQL Developer Series. And in this lesson, we're going to be talking all about joins. So the Firebase database SDK doesn't have any methods for joining data specifically, but that doesn't mean that you can't take data from one location and then find the related data and merge it into one set. So to see how we would do that, let's dive right down into the laptop. This is a database of events. We have events users and attendees, and an attendee is obviously a user that goes to an event. And if we want to get back all of the attendees' data, we would have to write this SQL query right here. So we have two inner join statements. We are inner joining events with attendees and attendees with users. And we can do this because of the foreign keys in the attendees table. So attendees has event ID, which references events, and it also has a user ID, which references users. So when we interjoin these together, we can then create the data set we need to get all the users' data that are going to a specific event. So how would we do this in the Firebase database? The Firebase database, the data is structured as JSON, and our top level keys are users, events, and event attendees. And event attendees is how we show which users are going to which events. So the FM key is the same key as the events key. So we know that all of the users underneath FM in events keys are the same users that are going to the event, which is the key of FM. So how would we do the join in this case? Well, we would use the real-time database SDK and we would get a reference to the event attendees at the FM key. And then we would start doing a child added event. And this would fire back each user that is going to the event. So the first time we would get a key of one, which is David, and then a key of nine, which is Alice. And that just gives us the name and not all the other user data. So to get all the other user data, we then have to do a join. So what we would first start out by doing is, is we'd create a reference to that user's location inside of the callback. So we can create a user reference using the snapshots key. Because the way we structure the data is that the snapshots key is the UID for that user. And then once we've created this reference, we can just do the once method, specify the value event, and then return the user in the promise. And this gives us back our specific user data for all the users that are going to this event. Now, one thing you might want to note is that we're using the once method. And this will only retrieve that data one time and not listen in real time. And this is the easiest way to do a join because you're not going to have to worry about inner subscriptions. And to see what those are, let's see what happens when we use the on method. So using on value, this will listen to updates for the user in real time. But when you use an on method, you always need to be able to dispose of that. So if you no longer need to listen to these updates in real time, you can call ref.off with the handle, and then that way you aren't listening to that user anymore. So when you listen to an event in real time, you are going to need to be able to dispose of that event. And so you can use the off method to stop listening, but you also have to pass in a handle. And when you listen using the on method, a handle is returned to you. So inside of each child added callback, we're creating a new real time listener. And so this is a new handle that we have to keep track of for each attendee. So this is how you would keep track of each handle so we could actually unsubscribe from the real time events. So we'll create an array of handles and then inside of the child added callback, we'll do our join where we grab the user reference and then get back the user data. And then after that, we will push the handle onto the handles array. And then somewhere later down the line, when you need to dispose of all the child events, you can just loop through the array and then you can call the off method with the handle. So that is for your more complex situations where you need to keep both data sets updated together in real time. But as you can see, for most of the time when you are grabbing reference data, like the user data, it might not always be changing in real time. So you can just get away with using once rather than having to keep track of all the handles with the on method. So now that we've taken a look at this, let's go dive in and write some code. 
So right here, I have a JS bin with a few variables at the top. We have an event key, which is a key to just one event, a root reference to our database, an attendees reference, and the users reference. So let's first see all of the attendees at this event. So to do that, I'll just say attendees ref once value, and we can log the snapshots. So console.log snap.val. We want to make sure we use the specific event. So I'll say child of event key. So now we'll run it. And these are all of the attendees at this event. And you can see that we have this key right here and then the user's name. So Margaret right here. And this key is actually Margaret's UID. And it's the same here for Anthony. So all of these keys are the unique identifiers underneath the user's key. So since we have this key, we can know how to join the data. So we'll write a function and we'll call it get users at event. We'll pass in a key and a callback. And so now we could say attendees ref dot child of key. Then we could say on child added and pass through a snapshot. So child added will fire off for every user. So this came back as an entire object in the console because we did a once value. But on child added, it's going to fire off line by line. So since we know that the key of the snapshot will be the user's ID, we can actually create a reference to that user's location. So we'll create a user ref, and that is users ref dot child of snap dot key. And then now we can say user ref dot once value, get that user's data as a snapshot. And then rather than actually writing this function right here, we can just provide our callback since it will be called with the snapshot. So now we can call this method. And so we'll say get users at event. We'll pass through our event key and then a callback function, which will just log the value to the console. So now I'll clear this out. We'll run. You can see that we have all of the entire data sets for each user that is going to the event. So that's how you do joins in the Firebase database. And you can see that it's really dependent on how you set up your data structure. And when you share keys across your data structure, it makes it really easy to find any related data using that key. So that's all for this time. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And stay tuned to the next lesson where we're going to talk about denormalization, which is a cornerstone in structuring your data for NoSQL databases. So that's all, and I will see you all in the next lesson. Thanks for watching our video. You might also want to check out this video, or even this one. I really like that one. And make sure to subscribe. And then now uh, you just watch me try to catch popcorn in the mouth. Oh, two in a row.